so um, uh, I will not talk anything about uh, cryogenic magnonics. So basically, uh, it's uh, slightly off of the scope of, of the uh, of the session. But I, I will pre I'll present to you, I think, uh, interesting talk about uh, our attempt to do non-conventional computing using uh, spin hole nano oscillator, and that based on uh, synchronized uh, spin hole nano oscillator. What we do, we will try to, to present like uh, neuromorphic computing and uh, iSync machine based uh, on, on those devices. And this work was done at uh, Gothenburg University in, in Hall uh, in collaboration with uh, Johan Ackerman, that is my previous postdoc uh, uh, boss, and uh, uh, partly in, in this uh, PLS microscopy facility at, at Gothenburg University. So the, the outline of my talk, I will motivate why we need non-conventional computing and why we use uh, spin hole nano, uh, nano oscillator for this. And then uh, I will show you uh, the mutual synchronization in arrays and in 2Ds and how those can be used for uh, neuromorphic computing. Then I will introduce our approach using spin hole nano oscillator for icing machines and then how to control them individually using uh, optical techniques and also to, to read them fast using the, the optical techniques. So uh, basically the, the, the motivation is still the same. So we want to make uh, computing uh, that mimics the, the, the human brain, for example, uh, like the artificial intelligence. Uh, probably the first attempt uh, is back to the 50s with uh, Rosenblatt uh, perceptron that was uh, based on neural network, all to all connected and with the promise of uh, basically mimicking uh, the, the sense and uh, recognize as, as, as a human. Uh, the, the, the idea behind this machine was to, uh, so Rosenblatt was a psychologist and uh, he wanted to, to build a device that can basically recognize cats from dogs. Uh, this was uh, inefficient, but uh, and the, the, the research in this area had faded and it was focused on software and algorithm till uh, recently and uh, the recent revival of this basically uh, motivated by the same that op so uh, motivated by the same that we need the artificial intelligence to do some problems that it's difficult uh, using the traditional computing also we are moving toward uh, uh, IoT and the smart cities where we need basically to, to do a purposed computing on, on, on the sensor or device, camera or pattern recognition, then uh, transmit lesser data as the data that uh, and uh, all the ICT information and uh, communication technology will consume uh, approximately 30% of, of the total energy produced by 2030. Uh, the also, the, 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 this the robots, autonomous vehicles is already here, we know. So, so we need, uh, we need to, to do this in an alternative to von Neumann architecture that consumes a lot of energy and it's relatively at low frequency. And uh, we, do to the we need uh, something that is uh, scalable, small, and time and energy efficient. And basically, we think that uh, Spentronic has promised to, to do this. As it's uh, fast, uh, it can work in different frequencies, uh, consume uh, less energy, and it's wave-based. Now, why we need oscillators, the spin-hole nano-oscillators? So we were basically uh, inspired by two works. The first uh, is the seminal work by Gruyere Group of uh, uh, vowel recognition or pattern recognition using uh, oscillators. They use four oscillators to uh, uh, and uh, see the, the, the injection lock in a pattern that can mimic uh, the, the patterns of, of vowel, and this, uh, this I will explain later. Uh, so th this was uh, first the work, and uh, the second work is th that uh, oscillators can be used uh, as icing machines that solve um, hard problems in, in computing, like comb combinatorial problems, uh, optimization problems, uh, and et cetera. And those can be used in, in large numbers and can uh, have a very high number of variables. For, uh, for both those approaches, we need the injection locked uh, coupled oscillators. And for this, so we need uh, nonlinear oscillators 
and uh, this we have uh, and I will show that, that uh, we can have the, the rest of the ingredients to have high density neurons and low power consumption and uh, the possibility of to synchronize or at least the highly coupled um, system. So the just as a uh, brief introduction to, to the, to the uh, spin torque or the, the oscillator based uh, physics, basically uh, the magnetization is uh, precessional dumped uh, motion that uh, described by these two first terms. And, uh, and the third term is basically the, the spin transfer torque that uh, contract uh, the dumping. So basically it can get uh, auto oscillation. And this auto oscillation then uh, can be read uh, through like magneto resistance, uh, GMR or PMR or like anisotropic magneto resistance. And in our case for, for the spin hole, we use basically the polarized spin current. We use pure spin current to produce by the spin hole effect in, in, in heavy metal. When you pass a current, there will be the flexion of, of the spin different direction and the accumulation of course. So if you have a ferromagnet in the vicinity, you will excite those auto oscillation with this uh, spin transfer torque. And th there is different uh, geometries uh, from those devices based on how you want to concentrate the current and read out the signal. And uh, those had been reported uh, by different group from Cornell to Demokratov and uh, Krivorotov. And uh, our interest uh, was mainly to, to, to reproduce these devices that uh, nanoconstriction based spin hole nano oscillator as we think that those are the most interesting as they are easy to fabricate. They dissipate well the heat with the, their planar geometry and uh, they have optical access and so simple and probably will, will uh, lead us to, to, to do simpler physics and to understand things more uh, thoroughly. And we do we did this based on on the first uh, so the first publication was by Demidov uh, and Demokratov um, and this work they they show this nanoconstriction uh, devices you concentrate the, the current here in small region and this will provide uh, the magnetization auto oscillation and the signal uh, will will modulate the, the magneto resistance and you can read it electrically and from the PLS. And the, the signal here with, with M-plane applied current, you can see that it uh, has a negative uh, frequency shift, that it's uh, this redshift due basically to the, that tho those modes are localized modes and uh, those localized modes and, and the vicinity on the, the nanoconstriction get more localized with, with the current. Now, um, we wanted to, to use those, but in a different geometry. So we apply an oblique field. With oblique field, you get more extended mode or propagating mode. So you, you basically uh, contract uh, the, the nonlinear uh, frequency shift. And with, with this oblique field, we get this non-monotonic dependence when you have a red shift and the blue shift. And this is a sign of extended or propagating modes. Uh, we published this and m in more details more recently for, for different constrictions and can see here that the, the power of those oscillators is very small and, and the line width it gets to, to very narrow line width but uh, still not good enough for, for applications and, and signal generators. Uh, so the, 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 the modes here in this region are of our interest. Why? Because th those uh, this uh, uh, out of plane angles we can see that the modes start to, to extend. So if, if we put another nano constriction there is a good opportunity for those uh, spin waves to, to interact through the, their tails. So we used uh, those uh, conditions and we put another oscillator so now those uh, can interact and talk to each other and synchronize as we see. So here those uh, each signal of the, the nano oscillator and then they synchronize at uh, this point uh, with their power enhanced and uh, they, they have one signal. And we could do uh, uh, this first work uh, at Nature Physics, we could do up to nine oscillator at, at one chain. We can see that their uh, frequency gets synchronized uh, above a certain current, and we can measure this also with the Brill one light scattering, the PLS. Uh, so we can see the, the spin waves. Here, this is a 2D map of those uh, oscillators. We can see that all of them are active and functioning at this uh, single frequency. Also, we can see their frequency as, as a function of the position, and we can see that all of them are working at single frequency. 
So then we moved on to, to do it in, in, in the second dimension. So we just added on a neighboring uh, array and we did this up to 10 by 10. By back then we just uh, get the full synchronization uh, up to eight by eight. Uh, now we get up to hundreds and thousands. But uh, with, with this, basically we, we get uh, fu fully synchronized oscillators that they are highly coupled and um, their characteristics shows uh, approximately what's expected the uh, low line width and um, they, they are high frequency so the, the Q factor is high then and the, the power enhances with, with the increased uh, number of oscillators and uh, here for, for this sample we have uh, four by four oscillators we can see that they, they have four signals that synchronize in, in one and uh, if we do this optically we can see at the unsynchronized state we can see that those basically uh, the uh, parallel chains uh, synchronized first and then uh, here we can see those the, the lower frequencies and the high frequencies and then at the synchronized state we also see that uh, those are all of them are synchronized at uh, and uh, working uh, so we could uh, we could do this then we get here to, to the point of the computing so uh, the, the the work from uh, Gruyere group where basically they used the uh, vortex based uh, nanopillar oscillators and those have uh, magnetic vortex that oscillate at megahertz up to one gigahertz so they, they are let's say relatively low frequency uh, they can they can produce high uh, signal due to the that they they are based on tunneling junctions so the, their signal can be really high so they can be uh, electrically synchronized between each other from uh, from one to another they are individually connected and th there is a microwave uh, stripe over them so if we pass an RF current over this uh, uh, strip we can basically inject block the, those oscillators they, they will adjust their frequency to this uh, external frequency and if we start with with the uh, with this uh, we have those four peaks of the oscillators so we start injection locking and you can see that there is uh, distinct uh, regions where you have one uh, oscillator or more that uh, are synchronized uh, so this is the injection locking map and from this map, one can basically tune uh, the, the oscillators to, to match uh, to match a pattern that he wants to, to classify. And in this case, it was vowels that basically was uh, coded in this and th those two frequencies. And one can basically map those vowels to totally separated regions. And one can do by this uh, uh, recognition of pattern vowels, etc. So, th so this this. This was nice and, and great work and our thought that we have uh, much higher frequencies in, in our oscillators. So why uh, can we try to do this with the, the spin hole nano oscillators that are much simpler, much more compact as they are basically done on, on uh, through lithography on one device. And uh, we tried this. So we tried this with uh, this four by four uh, oscillator and uh, so we lost. Um, we have the the four by four oscillators, so we have the signal. So similar to mm. oops, so, uh, similar to Gruyere, we have those uh, now as one oscillator. So each chain will will behave as one oscillator, and we will try to inject lock them. Now we cannot do like uh, on, uh, with the stripe, so we just inject lock uh, uh, the those uh, with with the same RF that it's running on on the sample, and. Uh, we do this so they they have now first neighbor uh, interaction so those neurons they are uh, do not have uh, a global sing, um, interaction actually they have till a certain point due to the dipolar uh, uh, interaction and uh, what we see that here if, if we take um, at, uh, one frequency scan we can see that uh, those can be synchronized at, at different re uh, regions and we can get the same type of, of map now at very high frequency so this this is half of the the frequency as we can inject this at uh, the second harmonic so it's parametric injection so those approximately at 19 gigahertz uh, so uh, we can tune uh, those frequencies of course by, by current as we see so we can change this pattern and we can change this by field also uh, 
but we want to do this also like individually to have more control or, or base control o over those and we will see this later so but let's hope to the to the icing machine and and first uh, l let's present what type of problems that those machines are uh, most adequate for so basically the, the there is a computational class of problems called uh, non-deterministic polynomial time problems which require like increasing time uh, the and uh, th there is no uh, efficient uh, frame of time or resources uh, 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 to to have a solution of, of those and in, in in computing and uh, one, one simple example of those are like travel salesmen or postmen that you need to go through different cities without passing the city uh, so this is the constraint and return to the same origin what's the shortest pass so the the possibilities can can grow really very fast here we can see f with five cities you have 120 possibilities with uh, th 32 you can get to 10 to the 35 so possibilities uh, other examples of such problems uh, face recognition or pattern recognition like in simulation protein folding also like in epi uh, an issue wha when you need to to minimize find the the, the global minima of of, of uh, your system uh, and financial uh, prediction, social uh, networks, etc. So th there are multiple problems of those, those types that they are very difficult to or impossible to, to solve in, in, in the th traditional uh, uh, computing schemes. And uh, basically th there was, uh, uh, b just I will present this, that, th that there is uh, the, the icing formulation that based on the icing model had been predicted to, to be able to solve all the, the, the this uh, non-polynomial, uh, non-deterministic polynomial time problems, even the, the, the hardest of those, like MP complete and MP hard. And uh, uh, this, uh, we have the, the CARP, like those, uh, he predicted 21 uh, uh, problems that it's impossible to, to, to find solution in an efficient time or, or resources. But uh, here, uh, th there is uh, the, 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 the a review of, of all the predictions of algorithm that basically adapting those problems to, to the icing uh, formalities. And uh, the, the icing machine basically that you have uh, an icing problem that you can map to, to the icing model. So icing model is the, the, the 1D uh, model presented by icing to that uh, with interac interacting spins and then the by Onsager that he presented this in 2D and then the, 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 the most generalization would be the, the spin glass. But uh, it keeps the name, the, the, the icing uh, model where you have a spin system that interacts uh, with uh, J and you have like a Zeeman term here, the, the, the like ex external field. So if uh, you can, using those uh, formalities of, of the icing uh, formalities, basically you can uh, mimic any, any problem to, to to this icing model using uh, spins. So you need a system then, the physical system basically to uh, that can adapt to, to those spins and to the interaction between those, uh, those spins that can be uh, optical, uh, optical parametric oscillators, uh, quantum bits or, or, uh, or any other oscillators and those basically you, you give energy and a link and they, they will give you their states that would be basically the solution and uh, this if with the, the von Neumann uh, computing you can uh, uh, you need to basically pass and see the energy at each level or use uh, some software or an algorithm to basically mimic this but from the the, f the icing machine the physical system will go to the, to the global minima and I'm, I'm running out of time probably so I will go wrap it on this so th there is um, just going to quantum and supercomputing, uh, superconducting. So we have the D-wave based uh, uh, based on squid and the uh, Josephson junctions. Uh, so that based on the, the current direction that mimics this the spin. And this is a commercial available system that you can simulate any problem on this D-wave system. The latest one is the D-wave advantage. And it has a lot of uh, qubits and they are highly interconnected it's working in dilution uh, and consume a, a lot of power and it's a massive device and it needs some quite some time to, to reach uh, the, the solution 
it, of course it has the, the quantum advantage of tunneling between states but so maybe not so much advantages over other things but th there is um, uh, an approach that presented by Wang basically that he used off-shelf electronics to, to, to do oscillators basically uh, ring uh, L uh, LCR oscillators and uh, he started doing this with 8 to 32, 64, uh, up to very high number of, of oscillators. And he did uh, icing machine with those, and we were inspired by this. So this is the actual photo of those. And what he can get, so uh, he can get faster than the GPU uh, computing with just this ordinary electronic and with this 1 megahertz operating uh, uh, conventional electronics and and the prediction that you go to higher frequencies and you can basically lower the, the frequency down uh, so this is what we hoped and uh, now this at, at oscillators basically how you can um, uh, present the, the spin it, it will be presented as uh, basically the phase of the, of the oscillation so and uh, to, to do this so you go from your icing for formalities so to to the uh, spin hole non oscillator for example and you inject at, at parametric at, at uh, the double frequency and but then the oscillator each oscillator have the freedom to basically to inject at uh, zero uh, phase difference or at 180 and this would be kind of the binarization and this just dissipated here so if you inject at the second harmonic so it will be equal to the to the uh, oscillator to be injected at zero or 180 degrees and and this is so we binarize through the phase. And uh, uh, of course, if, if you inject on the same frequency, you will have uh, the, the typical uh, injection lock-in and you will end up at, at zero phase difference <coughs> at uh, sufficiently high power, of course. So we can do the, the, the uh, injection at the second har uh, harmonic and we can get this with, with a single oscillator. We can get uh, very nice injection lock-in bandwidth. And to do this on oscillator it's the same so we have four oscillators so those can those are interacting and can have zero or 180 uh, phase difference to, to the external frequency and with this we can binarize so first we do the, the electrical measurement so we inject lock uh, uh, an external frequency uh, with uh, we increase the power and we can see that uh, the, the oscillator start to inject lock at a certain power this is due to the noise uh, in the system, the thermal noise. But then we can see uh, the injection lock can have like different power levels. And this is what we assume that uh, due to the different states of, of the uh, uh, oscillation. So here we have two oscillators, so they can go in phase or can be anti-parallel or uh, uh, to each other. And then we can see this as a function of frequency that it's the same thing that we can go from one state to another. and like from parallel to anti-parallel. So then how to resolve this phase? Actually, we can do the phase resolve PLS. It's kind of max sender. We can uh, uh, modulate the light at the same uh, frequency of, of the injection lock-in and we can see the phase. So here we have this two oscillators and here we have the two states. Here we can see the, the, the one of them at one phase and the other and here we change the phase, just the global phase shift just to be sure and we can see that they are like anti-parallel, here we can see that they are parallel. And uh, we got uh, this phase binari binarization confirmed. <coughs> and we can do this with more, like here we have four. Oops, I just go one step. So here we have four, we can, we can see that we have three states, A, B, and C, with A higher power and B no power, and C like intermediate. And we do the same, so here we have the measurement and here the repetition with another phase shift. So we can see that we have like this antiferromagnetic uh, coupling between those. Or uh, So we have two spins up, two spins uh, down, and this will make zero uh, electrical output power. When, uh, when all of uh, the, 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 the phase is equal, we can see that they are uh, parallel and th those all the, the, the SHNOs have the same phase. Here, if we just present like points between those, uh, so not take the whole map, so we can see as function of, of, of the, the phase. For the C case, we can see like we have one of them that it's going against the phase of the others. So with this, we could have like most of the ingredient of the, of the, the 
a spin hole based uh, icing machine so we have uh, a system that can can be basically binarized and uh, we can have the optical readout um, of course from uh, Ackerman group basically uh, we have published two, uh, two articles uh, based on like uh, electrical control of those with voltage control and with with uh, memoristic control of over the current I'm not going into details with this so just keep this uh <coughs> with the, the optical part so we can we can do the the, the annealing so the, the computation we can do the the, uh, the annealing through the current or 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 the field and we can read those out and the problem uh, as I mentioned that that can be solved now if, if we want to, to tackle this optically uh, so we showed uh, yeah I have no time I will just die so I will skip those so we we showed recently that we can control those optically uh, through the laser so we can change frequency uh, of the oscillator through just laser heating by one uh, one of those and we can uh, rapidly also uh, read the phase of those using FR mock uh, here for two states uh, and this is uh, like beating also the, the spatial um, uh, resolvance or the optical uh, spatial resolvance uh, so we have also like optical control over the oscillators and read the fast read out of their phase and with this I will come to my conclusion and thank you for your listening and Thanks. For your Thank patience. you very much for your impressive presentation, <laughs> which is now open for discussion. So, please. Yes, Van Rieslaan. Uh, Ahmad, of course, your work on synchronization of many oscillators is very well known. And my question uh, is the following. Uh, in one of the slides you've shown, that now you get a pretty significant power getting out of it. Did you manage to switch from anisotropic magnetic resistance to tunneling magnetic resistance as a mechanism of extracting power or not? Well, uh, b we, we are getting significant power with this AMR and we get now like higher numbers, uh, but uh, with the TMR, I'm not involved in this part of the fabrication, but th there is uh, very nice development with with uh, we have collaboration with the uh, ono group and we are doing locally uh, fabrication of mtjs uh, it's uh, slow but it's getting there so we have uh, now four yeah because if the tmr problem will be solved that will be a very big advance that will mean that we can actually use spin torque oscillators in conventional system like like phone because you've got you've got the line width of about one megahertz if you will be able to get at least one microwatt or 10 microwatts from a single device that will be sufficient to to, to start producing it in millions yeah yeah exactly yeah so uh, but we, but we get uh, down to 170 kilohertz of line width yeah my, my second question is uh, what is the uh, uh, current density uh, in the synchronized systems, and did you try to drive the synchronized systems for a long time, say a couple of days, without switching off? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the current density is, is is typical to the oscillators uh, regime. I think I, we did not calculate, but it should be like ten to the seven ampere per square meter. Uh, uh, centimeters. The the thing that we with the synchronization, if we can go rapidly, yeah. So uh, with the, with the PLS map, for example, with the the 2D map, uh, so this map took two days, uh, and it there is no practical, yeah. So and this is with DC current. You imagine with with the pulses that w you will not have any effect. So, so this can be considered like a very long time. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And my last question uh, is of a principal importance for computing. Uh, you know, spin torque oscillators, they look nice, but the energy efficiency is bad. You need milliwatts to drive it, uh, you get nanowatts of output power. So if you will use a lot of these devices, there will be a huge energy loss. And, and uh, uh, do you have the answer to this question? Because it looks well on paper, but in reality, you have uh, 
well, oh, you use only at, at best 1,000 of the spent energy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you, um, you are totally right. But uh, uh, this, if, if you think that you are taking energy out of those, uh, but at, at least for uh, for now, uh, I'm not trying to think that uh, we, we are trying to convert this energy in a useful way. So we just, if we just want to use those in, in computing, so the the uh, the uh, those fulfill the 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 the, the, the consumption necessity. Um, like uh, the, the energy spent per, per oscillation uh, as they get uh, very high frequency. <laughs> Finally, I would like yeah. to make a short comment. Hmm. I think that this group uh, is really the closest in the world to, to real success in terms of mass-produced applications. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we need to move ahead. Uh, it's my pleasure to hand in the certificate of attendance to Hasmat uh, Hawat. Okay, and we have to uh, continue the program.